And welcome back, Tankers. This is Mr. Kassarian, and today we are looking at the RDFS slash LT, also known as the Rapid Deployment Force Light Tank. Now, the RDF LT was never deployed. It was actually developed by AAI Corporation um, in the 1980s, basically. They gave it a 76 millimeter gun, two man turret with a crew of three driver, gunner, commander. The main gun had a double muscle break, muzzle brake, and the 76 millimeter shells for it were actually stored on the right side hull. And the engine was in the back. So. They used, the prototype used a 75mm cannon which used caseless ammunition. Um, and they gave it a burst fire capability which isn't modeled in the game. Um, you could also theoretically use this thing to fight counter low flying aircraft as a self propelled AA gun. Yeah. That didn't work out too well. So, the RDFLT could be transported, it was mobile, it was a clean, futuristic design, well-sloped glacis plate, the track link system was borrowed from the M113 APC, had a lot of good electronics, um, but the army just failed to show much interest in it. Um, basically, they had the Sheridan, and they thought the Sheridan was fine for what they were using it for. And... Honestly, as a concept, the light tank's a bit weird. It's designed to provide fire support for airborne units and some anti-tank capability for said units. So you could you could airdrop it, you could parachute it. Um, I think you could also put this thing under a helicopter, maybe? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. So... The major issue was the U.S. Army said, well, you know, we're, we're not expecting to really need a rapid, an RDF, a rapid deployment force tank um, anymore. You know, we have the Abrams. We have the Abrams now. We're deploying those. We have air power. So, thanks, but no thanks. All right, so let's compare the RDF LT. First of all, let's compare it to the VFM Mark V, another premium tank in the similar, in the same tier. So, right off the bat, let me just show you. I'm using actually using Freya for the RDF because in PVE, I've basically found that you're better off using your hiding isn't that important. You know, there aren't that many purely defensive maps. The PVE maps are usually about offense, getting to grips with the enemy, and engaging them. And it's hard to stay stealthy. And you shoot, you're revealed, the AI just swarms you. And there's so many of them that hiding isn't as much of a tactical advantage. Which is why I'm deploying Freya on the RDF. Uh, the VFM also is deploying Freya. Now the crew are at different skill levels, so that's going to change things a little bit, but not overly much. You can see they both have retrofits. Uh, the VFM is missing a mobility retrofit, but that's okay. So with the RDF, let's take a look. Damage. Um, let me get this flipped around. I usually like to keep on the lights, on the... I usually like to keep... Excuse me. My RDF, the tank I'm reviewing on the left, and the tank I'm preparing on the right. So, the RDF. Damage 308 versus 423 on the VFM. Well, okay. Damage straight up goes to the, to the VFM. Heat round. Penetration. 242 versus 266. Again... VFM. This is not surprising as this is a 105 millimeter and this is a 76. Same gun used on late model E8 Shermans actually. Different, well different gun with same caliber. Sustained damage. DPS of the RDF 6573 versus 4264. RDF wins. Reload time you can see why. 2.81 seconds. This tank is a machine gun. It goes boom, Three seconds later, it goes boom, and it just keeps doing that. Just check something out here. Okay, yeah. So with the armor, the hull retrofit thing, this thing down here, you get more HP on the VFM. However, I remember correctly, the RDF actually has more hit points. However, armor, yeah, you don't have any armor on the RDF. You just have no armor whatsoever. It's military aluminum, 
terrible modifiers, and there isn't any of it. Compare that to the VFM, which can actually be a little hard to pen. It's military aluminum, but it's thick military aluminum. 180 millimeters the front there. 155 turret front. So the VFM definitely wins that competition. Speed? Speed's about the same. Um, the RDF is a little slower to accelerate than the VFM is. The weight difference, I don't know. Utility. The RDF has slightly higher camouflage. But, but, I'm, I'm going to say this up front. I don't find hiding to be that useful in PvE. Not in a light tank. View range is about the same. Cam depression. Um, well, so the same forward depression, but the RDF can actually depress three degrees in its rear. The VFM has to elevate two degrees in its rear. Well then. Accuracy. Wow. All right. So the RDF is incredibly accurate versus the VFM. Aim time. RDF wins. Turret Traverse, the VFM wins. Okay. So let's compare this. I don't know if I have a tier 6. I don't have a tier 6 standard light tank. Okay. So, which do I prefer? I actually prefer the RDF, and I'll show you guys why. All right. Let me yank out a replay here. This was on Cerberus, actually. Right? This is a 10,000 damage match. I'm not at the bottom here, but let's take a look. Let's hit play. Play the selected replay. This tank, like most light tanks, is about mobility. I'm top here, t top tier here with an MBT-70, an Akatsi, Akatsiaya? I don't know. A BMD-2 and a T-72. We actually have some heavy tanks. We have some MBTs in this match. Hip hip hurrah. Hip hip hurrah indeed. Alright, so... Let's see how this plays out, shall we? Let me just get up. You can see me saying the same thing up the XM1's a pain in the neck. Which it is. It really, really is. Especially when you're equipping other tanks. <laughs> yeah, equipping those other tanks. Yeah, all sorts of fun. Alright, so now we're going to accelerate. The strike team is here. So they split into fire teams to cover so. the ground. I'm actually slowing down my acceleration because I don't want to be out alone. This is not a tank that can go out on its own. I kind of see what's going on. I don't know why I don't get damage counters on replays. So first of all, I got, can I get a shot at these guys? Maybe? In here? No. Okay. I can't do that. So what I'm going to do... Ow, because I'm going to come over here. I'm going to engage. Along with this BMD2. And the two of us are going to wreck the world. I actually don't think this was 10k damage. I think I was at like 8k and he got the 10 He was at like 10k. I think. BMD2, right? Put a round out. I miss. I don't have a shot, so I'm going to try and get a shot. Unfortunately, you're not really able to see how fast this thing actually fires right now, just because I'm having to really maneuver to get to targets. There we go. I'm going to fire. I'm going to fire. I'm going to take a hit. I'm going to pull back down. As you guys can see, I can... He's going to miss, so now I'm like, okay, he's he's fired. So now I can come out, shoot him in the back, and the BMD-2 will take him out. And now I notice a target over to my left. I put a round down range just to have put a round down range, and I'm like, well, this could be fun. Come on, come on. Shot out, and I get a hit. And I'm firing on the move, but the thing with the RDF is, it doesn't matter. Just keep shooting. Seriously, just keep shooting. There we go. But you saw, I didn't get the kill, but you saw how quickly I'm firing there. I 
All right, so now I'm looking at this 2A A6 out here, and I'm thinking, can I find a pen spot on you? Can I find one? No. All right, but I have a VFM out here. So I put a shot out. I'm like, okay, I can use this rock to limit the number of sides the enemy can come at me from. Fortunately, our MBT-70 takes care of that problem for me. But I still have this 2A6 to deal with. And I notice, oh great, there's a bagel. Bagels are your enemy in this tank. They may be lower tier than you, but they are still your enemy. They are evil and terrible creations. Don't get caught by a bagel in the open. Every shot he has will punch straight through you. So, basically what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to use... And I'm just realizing... There we go. One of the lieutenants was gotten getting close to our Artie, but our Artie managed to take him out. Yeah. That could have been bad. Ow. That hurt. Remember how I said this thing doesn't have any armor? Ow. I take the shot, I pull it back, I keep pulling it back, I take another shot. I take a hit. I think this is where I burn my rebuild kit. Yep, there we go. Now, I don't know why he's targeting me instead of this MBT-70, but your guess is really as good as mine here. But as you can see, I am dueling straight up with him. And I think at this point I'm using our piercing rounds. You can see what I'm doing is I'm just rocking back. And I get the kill. I take another hit, another I'm down to about half down. health again. That's not the sort of fight you want to be in in this tank. It really isn't. But, unfortunately, I had to kill him to cover that MBT-70 arms. Otherwise, things were going to get really hairy really quick. Our T-72 isn't doing that bad. He's low tier, so he's having a hard time. But our BMD-2, on the other hand, well, he may be low tier, but he is not having a hard time. All right, so he's taking care. Someone's taking care. Our BMD-2 is taking care of that secondary. And I'm just kind of creeping up here. Not only creeping, just kind of sliding up. Sliding up. I see a bagel panzer back there. I'm like, no, I can't get a line on him. Of course, my terrible driving comes into play here. And the two of us now are going to take this position. And there's a Stingray. Well, I'm like, okay, I need to fight this Stingray. Great. There's, like, no cover here. I need to fight the Stingray. You know what? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Artie. Thank you. So I find the next enemy lieutenant. Putting rounds up out of that BFM Mark V. I miss. Don't worry about missing in this tank. You know, it has good accuracy, but don't worry about missing because you have more bullets. Seriously. Or rather, you will fire again very quickly. I'm like, alright, this looks like a pretty. Oh, okay, yep. Our MBT 70 says, alright, I got him, buddy. I got him for you. I actually thought I got hit there. Turns out I got rammed by my buddy in the BMP2. I'm saying my buddy, but... Alright, so here is where I get a little aggressive and run into a rock. Because I'm thinking, I need to get some damage out. I need to get more damage out here. I get a shot on that Stingray, which was nice. I'm trying to get another shot on him. I can't, you can see from the angle, I can't quite manage it. He can't either, so I'm going to pop over, shoot him, and get back. And here's where that very good rate of fire, and my arty being an absolute champion... to get a hit on me, but look at this. I've lopped off a lot of that guy's health now. And 
And I'm like, all right, I'm not going to get a lot of that bagel. But this Terminator, on the other hand... Thinking, all right, you know what? I can just get a shot from down here on this weak spot on the turret. And that rate of fire. And that's with a damaged ammo rack, guys. That. Just that. That rate of fire. Thanks to Artie. And a kill on that lieutenant. Just like that. But there's a T-80 over here. I'm going to try and flank. Already makes himself useful again, providing some smoke. And that smoke lets me do this. I don't actually get the kill. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going over that. And I don't get the kill here, but I distracted him. Great one. You saw his turret was turned to engage me because he saw me as the closest threat. The because of that, you I freed up everyone coming. else to kill See you him. Back at base. Which is what we want. Right? Right. It is what we want. So what do I think of this gun? Um, I think it's pretty good. In terms of... Uh, crew skills, I'd go with standard crew skills. Just smooth ride, rapid fire. Um, whichever one increases your aim speed, just buff that. You know? Buff your rate of fire. You can see on this tank, I have a thermal sleeve, a gyroscope, and the intercon systems. So, better rate of fire, better rate of fire. Ammunition. Standard consumables, you saw that. In terms of ammo, I'm actually mostly mounting um, heat rounds and the high velocity armor piercing discarding Sabo, but I'm not actually mounting the APFSDS. Okay. I could get more pen with the APFSDS, but the damage is lower. I'd rather have the high, slightly higher damage, especially because this tank is a great flanker. So, that's my loadout. Now let's get ourselves into a mission live. Let's do hard mode. Let's wait 30 seconds. <clears throat> because I don't want to go into Life Jacket again. I've done that once today. No thank you. So, I think it's a good tank. Don't expect to really survive any damage in this vehicle. Um, yeah, you're not going to. You're not going to bounce anything. Auto cannons will pet you. Anything is going to pet you. You have very high, very high DPS. You are a glass cannon. That That is exactly what you are. You are a big glass cannon. And now let's see what we get for a new mission. Kodiak. Yeah, we can do Kodiak. Why not? <clears throat> and we're going right in. Nice. Nice. All right. Let's see what the game, what matchmaker throws us this time. I had Starry Night today with all AFVs and one light tank. That was an interesting battle. All right, so we are actually low tier, which is odd for a, um, a vehicle like this. That's odd for a premium. You usually don't get these sort of low tier. You have a higher chance of being high tier, basically. Uh, PLM. All right. Okay, so this is, I believe, mostly city fight. Yes, it is. Okay. So we have two Challenger 1s and a Challenger 1, a Challenger 1 and a Challenger 1 Wolf, really. A Stingray, a Palmaria. Okay. So we'll have some arty support. Not that it'll help much once we're into the buildings. The two Challengers will be nice to have. And Alan JB hasn't connected, so this could get interesting in a hurry. So two MBTs, two light tanks, and a Palmaria. There we go. All right, Challenger 1 Wolf is now connected. Black Company, there isn't any time to lose. The PLM is determined to capture this force. 
It's a strategic location that so is essential I'm actually for travel through this region. Do not let him gain a foothold we'll poke here. my nose in. Alright, there we go. They are if already attacking. The cargo this sort of rapid Stop response them. is exactly what this vehicle is designed Those to do. Calm that's how they advance so quickly here. Land company, recapture them. If I don't run into things. I've been spotted by someone. Nailed them. Took a hit. Ow. Probably said don't expect to bounce anything. Freaking crap. That was the wrong side to engage from, huh? Right, let's go this way. Of course there's a truck there. Damn it. Identify. Off the thing. Not going too well in the beginning of this match. Part where I should be doing pretty well, I'm really s not doing well at. Alright, you know what? It would really help if I actually watch the road. Damn, these things are fast. Target hit. Good work. Reloading. Good hit. How do we lose the... Ammo up! Really? Oh! Direct hit! Penetrated! Target destroyed! There we go. Much better. Identify target. Hostile PC. Good hit. Switch back to heat. Nailed them. Good hit. Penetrated. Target hit. Enemies converging at the helipad. Do not really let them land only their get here. a good impression of how fast this thing really fires when you're engaging targets like this. When you're engaging alongside other and other tanks. Okay, so we need to start pushing up now. Good, they got him. Alright, so now we can push it. Now it's time to use that rebuild kit. Nailed them. Target hit. Good hit. Destroy. I took a hit, but I got the kill. Again, don't expect to bounce anything in this tank. Well, shoot. No bend. No pen. Ammo up. Nailed them. Reloading. We need to get in there. Shit, we're hit. Yep, that hurt. Ricochet, no effect. No effect. 
Remember, just spam. You could literally just spam rounds in this tank. Target eliminated. Demonstrated. Target destroyed. Knocked him out. You are a flanker. Remember that. You are a flanker. That is your job description. If I can just get a flanking shot on this guy. No effect. There we go. Nailed him. Ricochet, no effect. Oh, don't push him back like up. that. Make my life a lot more difficult. They shot Black Company. They could go naval if they capture that area. Direct hit. Get over there. Target hit. Get in the park. Identify target. Awful. Tank. Target hit. Nailed up. Target lost. Target lost. And they got me. All right. Well, we tried. I did about 9,000 damage there, by the way. Me and another challenger won. And there's no way we can win it now. There just isn't. But you guys saw I was able to contribute fairly successfully to that fight. And he can't get there in time. There's just too many enemies there. You have to be a lot more aggressive on this map than we were being. Yeah, we lost. Forget the conversation. Okay, so no. that was a less than Black successful Company match, failed. but you guys get the point. The RDF LTF cap, if moved, if run properly, could be an incredibly powerful tank. Um, you just have to know how to use it, and you have to not get hit. And unfortunately, in that map, I was getting hit too much. Way too much. I should not have been getting hit that many times. I will need to bet I actually lost money on that because I burned my uh, resupply, my rebuild kit. But what can you do? If you don't burn it, you're out of the fight earlier, and the team may not win. I did make money. I made about 2700 That's not bad, considering I spent something like 4000 Yeah, see? Resupply. Sheesh. So, actually, I only made money on that because I have premium. That's the only reason I made money there. All right. This has been Mr. Casarian. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope you found it useful, even if I did lose my second match. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you found useful. Tell me what you don't want to know, what you do want to know. If you guys like the history bits I throw in the beginning, let me know. Anyways, as always, tankers, happy hunting.